So we talked about how to rebuild your dynasty team, but then there are half of you. Do you think you're really contending? And we're going to, number one, to tell you how to decide if you really are contending or if you're a pretender. But then we're going to tell you how to actually contend and to make moves towards contending and actually winning your leagues without completely cooking your dynasty team. Because, I mean, there's a lot of controversy over what makes a good or bad dynasty team. In our opinion, a good dynasty team is one that wins championships. So these are contending teams. These are, these are important. However, if you are sitting fourth, fifth, sixth in your league, you're not, are you really contending yet? So what do you do to get to the top? Let's talk about that. Question one, are, am I a contender? You need to be asking yourself this, and you need to be looking at your max PF standings and your points for standings, seeing the difference between those, looking through, and then asking yourself the question, am I actually a contender? Because I can tell you right now, if you're third in standings, but you are eighth in max PF and ninth in points for, you're not contending. Even if it looks like yeah. you are, even if you make the playoffs, what good is it going to do you if you get in the playoffs and you have an extremely low chance of winning that playoff game because you do not have the firepower that your other teams that have in the playoffs? What are you doing? You're essentially giving yourself a worse draft pick. And if you're really that low, if you're anything below seventh in those categories and you're sending away your first, you're literally asking to get burnt. So that's how you check. You, you need to get into the, your advanced standings and your sleeper league settings and you need to see what exactly you're scoring out in those categories at, that will tell you if you're a contender or a pretender. Yeah, and half of the challenge here is literally just being honest with yourself. This is something that uh, if anyone tells you that they don't struggle with this, they're lying to you. I know both of us do. We always do. We, we look at our leagues. We look at how we're doing, and we're like, eh, kind of the middle of the pack. If I make a couple moves here, I can actually contend and be really good. We've both done it before, and it has screwed us. Like, ruined us for a year or two, at least down the road. And it's something that you have to be really, really careful about. You have to seriously ask yourself the question, am I able to contend? Am I able to do it? Do I have that upside? Do I have that ability? Or am I just fighting an uphill battle that that's unable to be won? Let me just punt to next year and, and let's see. The next thing we're going to have here is, this is kind of a small one, but how big is the gap going to be between first and second? This kind of goes along with the first question of, am I a contender? If you're, if you're kind of middle of the pack, if you're, like you said, eighth and max PF, and you see the difference between first and second all the way up there, and you're like, even that gap is huge then there really is ultimately no reason for you to contend. But if it's really small, if the gap between first and second is small and the gap between second and sixth is pretty minimal, like less than 75 points, then I would say you should absolutely consider going for it, at least consider going for it. And it send out some feelers for teams that are absolutely rebuilding. Yeah. Ask yourself, how bad is your injury situation? So if you're first in points four and like third in max points four, but you just lost Justin Jefferson and James Connors out now, and now you've lost Anthony Richardson, um, you're probably not winning championships this year, I, especially if you lost like a Justin Jefferson. So uh, you're going to need to make sure you keep your first in that situation, but you also just need to make sure. Context is very very important here in these types of scenarios. So make sure you're checking your injuries. Make sure you're knowing if you're actually going to be able to make a legitimate run for the title at this time. Yeah. And the next thing we're going to have here is to go through every league you're contending and look at the bottom three rosters. Make offers for point scores that are young and old, really, honestly. You're, you're going to look at those bottom three guys, those bottom three uh, rebuilders in your league who... At all costs, they want to get the 101. Yeah. At all costs. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter how young their player is. It doesn't matter if they're a cornerstone asset. A majority of your rebuilds in your leagues, this doesn't apply to everyone's genius leagues, but many people want to get those players off the roster as soon as possible. There are going to be a lot of rebuilds that aren't patient. They don't want to wait to week 14 because every every week that they hold those point scores, that counts against their max PF. And that counts against their chances at getting the 101 next season. So they're going to be in a hurry to move off of the Saquon Barkley is going into a contract mm -hmm. year against the Austin Hollywood Eckler's, Browns, Josh Brandon Ayukes, Josh Jacobs going into contract years. They're all scoring points right now. They want to get every single point off of their team. It's funny. I, I mean, I think every single league that you and I are in, it is very clear who has a 101 because they have 
no one else on their roster. And it's we, the 101, and that's people it. People did this last year, and they cooked their teams for Bichon, yeah. and honestly, it hasn't paid off yet for them. No, it'll take a while, too. It will, yeah. But you can capitalize on that as a contender. We scream this to rebuilds all the time. That Remember, be patient. You hold the cards. If you're rebuilding now at week six, there's quite a big chance that there are already two or three other teams that are rebuilding harder than you. So just hold your contending assets now. Take the max PF hit. And then get as much draft capital as you can towards the trade deadline. Yeah, That's what we're saying to rebuilds. But for contenders, you can capitalize on those people that get cold feet. You can capitalize on those people that think they can get the 101 right now. So as a general rule, if you're sitting in the fourth to sixth range in your league, you've got to go make some moves one way or yeah. the other. Either commit to rebuilding or commit to com- contending and go make some moves. Yeah. But, I mean, it, at the same time, if the gap between first and the rest of your field is very significant... Don't let that be the reason that you don't make contending moves. It only takes one bad week from the number one team, and everybody has them. I've had teams go undefeated in the regular season and lose in the first round of playoffs. Only takes one week. It's all about luck. All you have to do is give yourself a chance. Give your roster a chance. If you have a roster that has high upside potential, that has boom potential in the playoffs, you've got as good a chance as anybody. I know people don't want to hear that, and personally, I advocate for heavier weighting of regular season champions because that's a lot better bigger of a deal to me than getting lucky for three weeks. But right now, you know how you win lucky or you know how you win money in your dynasty leagues? You get lucky for three weeks. That's how it is. So you don't really need to be first and you don't really need to worry if the first person is running away with it because at the point where everybody tanks, then you just give them the title. If you're fourth or six, you've got to make some moves, but get in the playoffs. You've got just as good a chance as anybody if you make it in at that point. Yeah, again, the recommendation we made earlier was if you're kind of a fringe contender or you don't really know if you're a contender or rebuild in that six to eight range and you're deciding, you look at first and second, the gap between first and second, how big is that? If it's too large, just punt to next year. What we will say is if you are top four, if you are top three, maybe second place, and the gap between first and the rest of the field is significant, don't let that be the reason that you don't make more contending moves and end up potentially even in a, in a perpetual rebuild if you try to sell off these assets because the gap is that large. It only takes one bad week, a single bad week from the team in first place or even a good week from you to win your league. To, to win the championship. We both know this firsthand. There's a league right now where I'm in second place, I believe, second or third, and your talent and your PF is way, way more than mine, like significantly more than everyone else's. Yeah, it's just like real life. But I've made contending moves, and I'm confident that maybe if I'm lucky, there's a chance that if you have a bad week, that someone will beat you or that I'll have a good week because of the upside. This is something that we've both got the negative receiving end of as well. We've been that best team. We've been the team in first that is four, three, three, four hundred points max PF wise going into the playoffs above everyone else. And we've lost like in the yeah. quarterfinal. We happened a ton last year. It's it's horrible. It was, it was like terrible. literally the worst <laughs> like possible. But that's what you count on in Dynasty Fantasy Football. That's what you count on in fantasy football. Yep. 90% of fantasy football is luck. 90%. If any, and, and you're playing fantasy football as a contender. You, yep. you really are. So that's definitely something that's very important. A lot of people will try to start shipping off some of their assets if the gap is that large. But if you're a top three, top four team, don't be afraid of it. Just just let it drive you and, and hope that you can get that down week from that first place team. Yeah. Don't sell low on young, unproductive assets. So I have a lot of contending teams where I drafted this year. I drafted Jason. I thought he was going to be productive this year. Right now, he's not been productive yet. But I'm not selling him just because, because I could honestly sell him and be like, I need contending assets and somebody pay something for him. I'd be selling him low. So like QJ, JSN, Charbonnet, no. If you are a contending guy that had those guys, do not sell them. Don't give up and don't sell low on these young studs just because they're not giving you contending value right now. The only exception to this is Jameer Gibbs, of course. We are selling Jameer Gibbs on contending teams. Because you can still get a haul Because you're still getting a good price for him. Yeah. Yeah. At all costs, please, at all costs, try to keep your 24 first. This is important. This applies to any other year. If you're in 2025, if you're watching this a year or two from now, Keep your 25 first. Keep your 26 first. Don't try to destroy the future of your team and hope that you're going to get lucky enough to win the championship this season. Yes, there are plenty of situations where you should trade away your 24 first. 
we are telling you to attempt to keep them at all costs. The longer you hold them, the better off you are for it. If you have to move off of them in week 14 to make a major push, that's fine. That's that's fine if if the situation calls for it. Yeah, because there are some exceptions here. Yeah, one, one there ex- absolutely are. There, there are all the time. But that doesn't mean that you can't attempt very hard uh, attempt to keep your 24 first. So I, I think that's something where there have been a lot of teams that we've seen that have won their leagues this season, and they've been very wise, and they've kept at least a first. Maybe if they're lucky, they have maybe even two and a couple seconds as well, and they look amazing, like yeah. amazing for the next three years because of that. Yeah, the more picks you have, the better you look long-term. And yeah. one of the exceptions to the, the keep your first rule is, it, I say this, you know, knowing the luck factor of this, but if you're yeah. almost guaranteed to win, the league that Nathan's referring to, I'm running away with. I'm completely running away with it. And so my, my pick was being looked at essentially as a second-round pick, which was stupid, but at the same time, that pick, they won 12, won, it was because I'm getting a buy. Like, I don't, it is a ridiculous team. I don't need the 111, 112. Even if I keep it, it whatever I get will serve me better for two reasons. Number one, if it gives me star power, which it did, because I got Josh Jacobs, CD Lamb, and something in a deal with my first, like it gave me star power, then I have a better starting lineup to even further increase my chances of winning. But number two, it takes away contending. I took three contending assets away from a rebuilding team or a team that wanted to rebuild. Three contending assets that he could have had or somebody else, now they don't, and it's on, they're on my roster. I did that on purpose. I don't want them to have a chance to buy. If I, if there is going to be anybody, even if I have the best team in the league by far, if I've got my first and they, there's a guy that's offloading a bunch of contending assets, I'm not letting Nathan get them. I'm getting them, even if I'm not starting them. That's yeah. part of the competitive advantage that some people yeah. don't think about in dynasty leagues when you're contending. But play the play the game, man. I, I mean, like for example, I, sometimes I will look at my if I if there if I'm in the top two of a league and there are two guys at the top and I've got another team I've really got to beat I'll target his quarterbacks wide receivers I will that means if his quarterback in a super flex leagues if both of his quarterbacks have great games my receivers went off like and there are just small things you can do to put yourself at a slight like it's like increasing your chances of winning by one percent or half a percent and it's huge and you can stack those up and ultimately give yourself at least a slightly better chance in the playoffs and make it you know 85 percent luck 80 percent luck that's what we're trying to do here and the other exception is if you're getting a really really insulated value in return so like for example my first i didn't need it i also didn't need contending assets so had i been able to trade that late first for jsn i'll take jsn the value insulation is ridiculous there yeah even though i don't need him and even though he's not going to help me why yeah. wouldn't I? It sets, me, it sets me up for success for years beyond this one. Yeah, it was a larger package deal, but like in, in a deal as a contender, I went out there and I sold essentially my first for Jalen Waddle. And uh, why, why would That's you... stupid. Why would you not turn... Why would you not take that? Is what I'm trying to say. I also man. got Justin Herbert it, in that deal. It, it was dumb. Yeah, it, it was, a, it was uh, a nice deal, but... <laughs> <laughs> for you, it was. <laughs> I essentially, that's essentially what I got for, for Jalen Waddle. So it was it was great. But those are the kinds of insulated value returns that we're looking for because, again, you're going to have a lot of rebuilding teams that are just desperate to get these players off their roster who will likely score points towards, towards the end of the season. Dual purpose or universal guys to target, like some of these guys that, regardless of if you're a rebuild or a contender, but we're on contenders today. So as a contender, go get Chris Godwin. He's scoring points. Rebuilds don't want him on their team for some ridiculous and reason. His value is fairly insulated. Did you order the shirt? Oh, uh, we got to talk about that. <sighs> Dude, come on. Buy Chris Godwin. App- apparently, you can't use uh, an NFL player's name on your merch or you get copyrighted. Oh, that's <laughs> devastating. Okay, well, <laughs> lesson learned. Well, yeah, sorry, go, not lesson learned. We, we didn't do it. Josh Downs, please go get Josh Downs. I, I mean, he's a great asset to own as a contender right now because he's scoring points. He's getting plenty of volume from Gardner Minshew, even out producing Michael Pittman. He's literally mm-hmm. T.Y. Hilton Re-incarnate. reborn. Yep. Like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Geno Smith. Yeah, he's had a couple of rough weeks. Yeah, he's thrown a couple of picks here and there. The offense doesn't look amazing, but my goodness, people are viewing Geno Smith like a contending asset when he is on a three-year contract with a great situation playing with Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet. He's going nowhere. This guy has better value insulation than the other guys he's going around. I mean, just as good value insulation as Jared Goff. 
Oh, yeah. Way better value insulation than Kirk Cousins, who was going ahead of him earlier in Dynasty this year. Yeah. Better than Jordan Love. Yeah. We don't know what Jordan Love's going to do after this season. And they're good for rebuilds and contenders. Yeah. Now, as a contender, these are guys you shouldn't be targeting. D-Hop. No. I, I don't try to get any part yeah, of that Titans offense. It. Mike Evans. Uh-uh. Don't see this guy perform at a high level and go buy him high. Because there are plenty of other assets you can go buy low on. Yep. Tyler Lockett. No. JSN is why. It's not against Tyler Lockett Tyler as a Lockett's talent. great, man. He's already been inconsistent so this many. season. We have a lot of Tyler Lockett. So we like him a lot. But JSN, man, he finally showed out once DK, and DK Metcalf was injured this week, and I think that's going to continue for the second half of the year. I really do. Yeah. Old guys you should be t- targeting. Last last point here. Adam Thielen, still undervalued. He's Raheem so Mostert, cheap. you can get him for a second or a third. Kamara. Second. Please. Saquon. Yes. Josh Jacobs. Absolutely. Those are the type of guys you should be targeting in trades. And again, that's that's a I mean, that's the part everybody wants to hear. That's probably the least important part of this video. So again, be smart with your contending teams, but make sure you don't enter perpetual rebuilds after you contend for a league and make sure you're not cooking your dynasty team in the process. So if you want a team blueprint, we can help you out with contending. We can tell you what moves to make. Flockfantasy.com slash domain. The blueprint is right here. And if you use code domain, you get 30% off. You get our articles, you get rankings, you get discord, and you get a team blueprint. And they're pretty cool. So like I said, flockfantasy.com slash domain. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you later.